The all-new Kling 2.6 motion control has just taken things to the next level. This tool allows you to transfer motion from a video directly onto a static image, which could be done before. But now the difference is that this is really powerful as it accurately handles even the complex movements, not just basic motion, but fine details like subtle head turns or even hair movement. On top of that, Kling does an excellent job of tracking the original camera movement, so the final result feels really dynamic and it does so without really producing any significant artifacts. So let's see how to access this tool and how to use it. So let's do this by looking at some different examples. So first of all, how do you access this tool? The first way, of course, is to use the native Kling app, which is by going over to their website. I'll leave the links to all the tools as well as the images and the videos that we will be using in the examples that I'll be showing you in the description. You can download everything from there. But once you go over to the Kling website, the good part about this is that you can use it even on a free account because when you do sign up, you get 166 credits completely for free per month. And then you can go over to the video part here and then just head over to this drop down menu and make sure you have selected the latest 2.6 model here. And in the sub menu here, you're going to go over and select motion control. And then you add your performance video and you and you add your character image right here okay so we're going to do that soon and the second way to access this is that now this is available also in most of the all-in-one ai apps via the api and my favorite is hicksfield ai i'll also be showing you the second example right here because under video you can see that we have cling 2.6 and Kling motion control. Both these models are here. So the motion control uses 2.6. So for our first example, let's head back to Kling's own app and do things here. So for this first example, we've got this video where this woman is doing all these karate martial arts like moves. And you can see this is something really tough for the earlier tools to probably replicate onto an image, something like a runway or runway act two or something like a one photo animate, both of which also I have shown previously on my channel. But with Kling, you can do this pretty seamlessly. So first of all, we're gonna add this particular video right here, so let's do that. And then for the character image, you can pretty much create anything that you want. I'll be showing you a lot of different examples of this later on. But right now, I'm just using this image of this warrior standing on the top of the mountain. So let's add this here. Now, a couple of important things. The people at Kling do say that usually you're going to get the best results when the composition is similar to what you had in the video for the character image. So here you can see this is full body, but here you can see we can pretty much only see three fourths of a body, at least when the video starts off. So I'll show you both the results, what happens when you use full body in this case, or what happens when you zoom in slightly and we can see like three fourths of his body. And to be frank, the results are not too different, but yes, the chances of things going slightly wrong are more when you're deviating away from this difference in the composition. So one thing is that. Second thing, make sure that both the performance video as well as the character image only have one person. If there are multiple people, you're simply gonna get an error. It will not generate the videos. There's another important point, which is that you actually have two different options here. One is which says, you can see this thing which is checked here, which is character orientation matches video. And then you have this option that says character orientation matches image. And this is not enabled right now because this is only available for videos that are between three to 10 seconds, as you can see. So what does this mean? Because this can be a bit confusing. Well, all this means is that if you select this option, which is selected by default, character orientation matches the video, then what we are saying is that in our character image, if the starting pose is a bit different than the starting pose right here, can you see? If I just pull this video right at the start here, she's just facing this side, whereas in our character image, this person is looking pretty much at the camera, right? So the poses are different. So if I say character orientation matches video, then we are forcing the starting frame. Ultimately, when this video will get generated, we are forcing this starting frame to have a similar pose as to what we had in the start. So it's not gonna actually use this, what you see here. It will turn this person and make it similar to this. And this is the recommended approach because if the poses are similar, then the results are much better, especially for complex movements. And it's also good for us because that means 
we while we are generating our character image in any ai software like let's say nano banana then one of the toughest things used to be to make your person have exactly the same pose as the starting frame of the video but now you don't have to do that even if the pose is different this option will force the character to start off with the pose so most of the times you're going to be selecting this but if you had a 3 to 10 second long video uh, even then, I would suggest that you don't choose this one because in this case, the second option, it won't change the pose. It'll start from here and then you can clearly see that there's going to be a mismatch between how things start and therefore it'll probably not be able to copy that movement accurately. So like, so like I said, I'll show you both the results later on, but that's it. There's nothing else to it. You just scroll down on your free plan. You can only go for the standard quality and... We go, we're going to go for one output and it's basically five credits per second. So maybe on your free account, you can generate up to two to three videos, but not more than that. So I'm going to hit generate and let's see the result. First of all, when I selected this option, which said character orientation matches video, this was the result. So you can see that was pretty much perfect. There were no artifacts, even though the movements were so complex and the way it just replicated that camera movement, which was also not easy in this case, it was continuously moving, was absolutely fantastic and it did not really produce any sort of artifacts. But let me now also show you a result where I had actually just shortened the original video so that I could use the other feature also, which is character orientation matches image. In that case, it does not change the pose and this was the result. So you can clearly see this was not as good as the first option. So pretty much in any use case, you're actually going to select that default option, which was checked anyway. Also do note that on your free Kling account, these videos will be capped at the high definition resolution, which is uh, 720p. So yes, good for social media, but probably not good for commercial usage. Also, before I leave Kling here, you do have the option also in this prompt box to write something extra. Maybe I wanted also a dragon to be flying across the sky here. You can also do that, but try to avoid anything too complex because then it does start to even produce artifacts in the movements. And we're gonna see that in uh, an example later on. But right now, let's go back over to Hicksfield because like I said, you do have this uh, motion control tool here also. And you can see once you do select this tool, the interface is exactly the same. You can add your performance or your reference video, and then you can add your character image. You can type in a prompt. And then again, we have the same options. Do you want to select the orientation that matches the video? So this is usually again, going to be this uh, the choice that affects the uh, pose of the starting frame and here we can also select the resolution and as you can see here if it's a HD resolution it costs around one credit per second pretty cheap and for a full HD resolution it's around one and a half credits per second which is again not too expensive. So for the second example I have this video from one of my online courses and this time it also has audio which also cling motion takes into account. So this is the video and in this course I will be teaching you the art of green screen technology also called as chroma keying. Now, usually when it comes to green screen video production, one of the biggest challenges that people face is the complexity involved in And then what I did was I basically took, first of all, a screenshot from this video. If you don't have an, a video editor with you, you can always use a free website like this one. So I can upload this video right here. As this video is uploaded here, I can just go on to any part of this video, just right click, and save this video frame. And then I basically went over to the image creation part on Higgs field. You can also do this in Google Gemini. Uh, uploaded the screenshot here and used the Nano Banana Pro model. The prompt was very simple. That turned him into someone who's wearing a tuxedo like this. And also turn the 
green screen into something that looks like a professional YouTube studio. So we are ultimately going to transfer the motion and the audio to this image. There was another image uh, for the second example where I turned my, I just said, replace this man with Snoop Dogg. And you can see that uh, this was pretty good. One important thing whenever you're doing these things, because one advantage we have now with Kling Motion Control, as opposed to the other tools like its competition, like Runway Act 2 and even One Photo Animate, is that it doesn't soften the skin too much when it generates the final video, which is a huge advantage when it comes to maintaining the realism. However, still, when you are transferring it human to human, like we are doing in both these examples, make sure if you can, because this can't be done in Gemini, but it can be done in something like Hicksfield, you go for the 4K output when it comes to changing your image, because obviously then that way you have more detail on the skin and it's gonna look more real. But then I had these two images with me, so I uploaded the original video right here. And then I also uploaded the image right here. And in the prompt, you can just Either you can leave it blank or you can just say, in this case, man talking doesn't really matter. And then, since this video was more than 10 seconds, I anyway have only the default option available, me, uh, available with me, which is video orientation, full HD resolution, and you can see it's gonna cost me 23 credits. Since I've already done this, let's see the result. And in this course, I will be teaching you the art of green screen technology, also called as chroma keying. Now, Usually, when it comes to green screen video production, one of the biggest challenges that people face is the complexity involved in And you can see that look pretty good. I did the same thing with the Snoop Dogg image. So let's see that result too. And in this course, I will be teaching you the art of green screen technology, also called as chroma keying. Now, usually, when it comes to green screen video production, one of the biggest challenges that people face is the complexity involved in and you can see there was no softening of the skin. It didn't look AI in any way. So now this can enable you to basically put yourself in any situation or change one person to another without really compromising on that human element because it even copies those subtle movements really, really well. Let's look at the next example. So now that you know the drill, let's just quickly see the third example also, which was about this video. Again, I followed a similar tactic. I took the screenshot and then used Nano Banana Pro and prompted it to basically add some people on the street and also change her clothes to something that feels like a fancy uh, dancing costume. And this was the result I got. And in this case, I did go over to the prompt section and I had just written that the people are cheering her on as she's dancing because uh, they should not be completely static ultimately in the last video. So this is an area where something like the prompt can really, really help you out. And the other settings just remain the same. And let's see the result here. So this time you could probably notice a few of those artifacts coming on the face, but even if you notice like just the movement of the dress, I mean, it looked really, really natural, which was not the case earlier on with things like Runway Act 2 and uh, One. So yes, maybe not 100% perfect, but it's still far, far ahead from its competition. And undoubtedly right now, this is the best motion replicating AI tool out there. In case this video helped you out, do give it a like. And for more AI tutorials like this one, make sure you subscribe and I will see you next time.